Okay. Well, it's 11.05, so I'm going to get started. It looks like we have about half the people who registered on. So, um, Gail, uh, yes, I did. You had a lot of, we were hearing a lot of background noise um, from you. So I'm actually going to mute everyone now just so that there's no feedback or anything in case you guys have, you know, things going on. We all know. How really you just oh, see, there's some sorry music off right now. That was me, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. I completely get it. So I'm going to mute everyone now. And then um, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourselves. You have the ability to be able to do that. And um, if you don't know how to do that, don't worry, you'll learn that. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll go on from there. So, and you can always use the chat box as well. And if you don't know how to use a chat box, you'll also learn that. <laughs> all right. So you guys can see my screen, right? Did it go away? It looks like it's, all right. So you got my learning Zoom basics up here. All right. So we are going to go on. Um, this is brought to you by Arrow Title Services and the Martin County Realtors Association. So thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to be able to come on today and teach you guys a little bit about Zoom. Um, it has really become a huge part of our industry and just the times nowadays, things are changing on a daily basis with technology. So it's very important that we adapt um, and we, you know, overcome the, these circumstances. So thank you again for allowing me to be here with you guys today. Um, my name is Lucy McGuire. If you don't know who I am, I am the business development officer for Arrow Title Services. I started here about a year and a half ago. Arrow has been around for three years now, but Michelle uh, Chart is our owner and title agent, and she's been in the industry for nearly 30 years. And I know a lot of you guys know her. She has a very well standing in the community, and she's amazing. One of the best bosses I've ever had, for sure. Um, but I am born and raised in Jensen Beach, in case you guys didn't know that. So I am a true native here and I haven't moved away yet. So it's a beautiful area and I've truly, um, I've traveled the world and I came back here and I was like, wow, we truly do live in paradise here. Um, due to coronavirus, we have all had to really make these changes in our lives and adjust to a lot of the technology that's come out in to utilize it in our businesses. And that's one of the things I've really implemented with Arrow. Um, we started a YouTube channel. Um, I host weekly uh, Zoom meetings, the market update Mondays and the Thursdays top tips in real estate. If you guys haven't seen those, I encourage you guys to go to our YouTube channel and check them out. They're pretty great. And you guys are always welcome to join on them as well, if you guys are interested. Um, and it's just a great way to get information out to the public and going live from Zoom. Like there's so many different aspects you can utilize in Zoom. And a little quote that I always like to say, especially in these times right now, is one of the things in life that is constant, but one constant thing in life is change. So if we're not willing to work with it, then you know, you're gonna get left behind. Life doesn't wait around for anybody, right? <laughs> so. Um, you know, the internet is truly taking the world by storm along with video. If you guys aren't utilizing video in your businesses, I highly, highly recommend it because on every social media platform, it truly is given more weight to photos and statuses or articles. Like if you're posting videos, social media is going to give you more power and more visibility if you're utilizing videos um, on your social media. So today we're going to go over the basics of Zoom and, you know, how to rename yourself if you're utilizing your phone or your computer, virtual backgrounds, viewing participants, raising your hand, like the little features that, that are available, um, chat box, screen share, et cetera. So if you guys have any questions that, doesn't, that I don't go over today, feel free to write them down, ask them, and I will get to them. Um, there will be a portion at the end where you can ask your questions and we can go over those. So I do want to encourage questions. You guys are will, you guys are able to unmute yourselves again if you just joined, um, but you can also put it in the chat. I'm monitoring the chat as well. So I recommend Zoom on your computer. I feel like Zoom on your computer, it, you're going to get the best. Um, you're functionality wise on your phone, you're able to do probably about 90% of the same aspects, but the locations are going to be slightly different. And I do, and some of the um, portions that we're going to talk about, I go over the 
mobile version as well because I know you know we're all in real estate we're all on the go and a lot of times we end up using our phone sometimes if it's not something like a listing presentation if we're just hopping on a zoom call and we're on the go so I did want to make sure that I included the phone aspect as well if you plan to use that um, in the future so just know that it is a little bit slightly different and I do notate where if, if it's the feature isn't available on your phone. So the first thing we're going to go over is navigating your Zoom screen. So I do want you guys to be familiar with the buttons that are allotted to you guys on the Zoom screen itself. So if you're looking at your screen, there's going to be um, at the bottom of your screen, there will be the mute on the left here. You guys can see my, um, my mouse, right? Everything good? Thumbs up. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, so you have your mute area right here. This is where you can unmute and mute yourselves. And then you have your stop video. This is where you control your video. And then you have your participants, chat, screen share, um, whether you want to record or not. That's dependent on the settings of your, like if you're in a Zoom meeting and they allow you to record it, that's one thing that may or may not show up for you depending on the settings of the Zoom call that you are participating in. And then there are reactions. So this is what it should look like on your computer screen. Um, we're gonna go over the different views that you can have on those screens. And then you have your leave button in the corner, et cetera. That's what the basic Zoom looks like on the computer. Now, when you're on the phone, you have the same things at the bottom except there's going to be a more section here and you're going to be able to access the chat there, um, the raise hand feature, etc. So these things are going to be in the more section, but it's always going to be at the bottom of your screen. So that's how you're going to access those features. And then when you're on your phone, you're going to see here, um, this is where your audio, if you want to switch your camera from looking at you or to looking at using your back camera, if you're trying to show something else for any reason and then where you leave the meeting. So viewing participants. Now this is a very important thing that you guys wanna be able to utilize. Now there's a lot of features that come with viewing the participants. So knowing how to get to the viewing participants is important. Um, now there is a couple of different modes and we're gonna go over those different types of modes. But once you get to the participant screen, um, you're going to be viewing, if you're viewing in full screen mode, if your screens in your full screen mode, your participants list is going to pop up separately. Now, this participants list is going to show you everybody who's in the Zoom call. You can see their names and everything like that. So you can see if they're muted, if they're not, if they have video or not, as you can see here. Um, don't mind some of my faces and some of these zooms, you know, sometimes I was paying attention when I was screenshotting and sometimes I wasn't. So you guys get the view of multiple of my faces. <laughs> um, but so if you're in full screen mode, your chat box and your participant screen are going to pop out separately and you can move them around the screen. Now, if you're in the fill screen mode, um, you are going to have your participants list on the side and it's going to pop up right there. So this is when you're in that minimized view, but it's still taking up majority of your screen. And getting to that participants again is, you know, at the bottom when you are clicking on the participants list, it'll show you how many participants there are as well. Now, when you're viewing participants on the phone, um, you do have to be wary. If you go to click participants, it's going to take you away from the Zoom aspect of it. So you're not gonna see those faces anymore and it's gonna bring up the list of all the participants. So when you're on your phone, it's a little, you're not gonna have as much flexibility to be able to see what's going on if you're looking at the participants or if you're looking at something else. But there are reasons for you guys to be able to util like see the participants list if you are hosting a Zoom or whatever it might be. Um, these are where some of your features are going to pop up. Now, are there any questions in regards to viewing participants, et cetera, like that? Does anybody have any questions? You can feel free to put it in the chat. Yes or no. You're good. I do. You do? Go ahead, Dennis. Okay. The difference between a full screen and a fill full screen, how do you change it on your computer? We'll get to that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. Anybody else have any questions about the viewing participants? All right. 
Um, and that's right after the rename yourself, Dennis. So we'll get to that. Um, so I do want to go over the how to rename yourself because this seems like to be a very big thing. When you go on to a Zoom meeting and someone's named iPhone and they don't have a face up or whatever it might be, it's not very, you know, practical. You, of course, want people to know that it's you that's in the chat. I think that everybody here, oh, well, except minus one, has their name on, so that's good. Um, now, renaming yourself, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, now you do, you can change in the settings. Uh, if you go to Zoom on your computer and you go to your settings on the website like zoom.us, you can change your name there. And then also on your phone, if you go to the settings in your Zoom app, if you've downloaded the application, you can find a way to, it's called display name. And that's how you can permanently change your name so that you're not coming up as iPhone or whatever it might be. Now, when you're, let's say you're in a uh, meeting and you only want to show your first name or for some reason your first name is the only thing that's showing up. Now, when you go to the participants list, you are going, there's going to be a little arrow on the right hand side. When you click on that, you're able to, or it might, it should, might show up as a dot, dot, dot or an arrow. When you click on that, it will give you the option to rename yourself. Now that's how you're going to do it on the computer. So that's why it's important that you know how to get to the participant screen because then you can go to the more function. And when you click on that more, it gives you the option to rename yourself. So if you're renaming yourself on your phone, again, that little arrow over here, you're gonna click on that, click rename, put in your new screen name, whether you wanna include your business or not. Now I don't recommend having, you know, it be super long because it's not going to show up all the way, especially if you're doing like a live on to Facebook or whatever it might be. It's only going to show a, few, a little bit of your name. So you don't want it to um, be too long. But that's where you can enter your screen name. And then you see here that it um, updated when I changed it. So that's a great way. That's how you rename yourself. Does anybody have any questions? Let me see. I see that there's a couple of people that don't have their last names on here. Um, does anybody have any questions in regards to that? Do you guys want to try and rename yourself and see if you guys can get to it? Try, try and do it right now. See if you can get to the whole functionality. Let me know if you guys have any issues with renaming yourself. Hey, Lucy. Yeah. Hi, can I ask a question? Of course. Hey, it's Barb Clifton. How are you? Good, and you? Good. So I was in another Zoom call like a week or so ago, and normally when I'm on a call, yeah, my name comes up. But on this call, I came up with a number. So were you on your happened? phone? I know, I was on my laptop. And it came up with a, your, a number, your name with was a, a number? With a number versus my name. Is that so, because normally when I'm on a call, my name comes up, but is that something that sometimes happens, a number comes up? Um, it shouldn't if you, unless you had your settings done weird or something like that. But if, for instance, if that does come up, like if you are named something different for any reason, that's why it's important for you to understand how to rename yourself. Just go while to the, the chat. Okay. Yeah. So just for, if any reason it changes, like if you're going on a different device or a new device that you've never used Zoom on before, being able to rename yourself is a good capability to have so if okay, you can great. So i've never seen that happen before and so the, okay the, so i didn't i didn't bother to rename it but next time i'll do that yeah and that right, is, is for those exact situations um you want to be able to know how to do it all right so thanks. oh i see someone's utilizing the raise hand feature marlene go ahead are you marlene do you have a question or are you just playing with the raise hand function you are muted, just so you know. <laughs> okay, um, can you hear me now? I can. <laughs> okay, my question is, how do I take my picture off of your screen? I see some of the people have an X over their um, picture. How do you do that? So what, you just want to see my beautiful face? No, well, <laughs> I want to come off. How do I come off? Oh, you don't want to be on the screen. No, yes. Oh, How do okay. I come off? So we're going to, so if you go to the, here, I'll show you right here. Down here on the left, bottom left, 
You should be able to click the video button and turn off your video. Yes. Okay, stop video. There okay, you go. Okay, so I did that. Okay, that's how you do it. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. Can you unmute me? Can uh, you, you turn me back? To mute? Can you, okay, so I'm gonna mute. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> you have. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to mute you while you were speaking. Go ahead, Marlene. Do you have another question? <laughs> you get, do you want to put in the Marlene are you okay you want to put in the chat yes you you okay or do you have another question I am going to get to the point where you learn how to unmute yourself as well so we'll get there if you have any questions yeah if you need something Marlene you just let me know okay all right so does anybody have any questions about renaming yourself did anyone try it? Successful? I see that someone has a phone number as their name. I'd love for you, I don't know who you are, but I'd love for you to rename yourself for that exact reason. <laughs> if you are listening, it's 772-287-1981, if that's your number. No? All right, well, I won't spend too much time on that. But if anybody has any um, questions about renaming yourself, Again, it is a very important aspect to know if, in case your phone number does come up or you're on your iPhone and it's coming up as iPhone. You do want people to know who you are. All right, so now we're going to go into the screen modes. Now, there's a few different screen modes. You have full screen mode, fill screen mode, and a minimized screen mode. Now, the differences, depending on what yours looks like right now, um, this is what full screen mode looks like. It is going to take up your entire screen. You're not going to be able to see any of your other applications at the bottom. Um, you still have your, your um, options at the bottom and everything. This is from the computer. And then you, it'll say you can press escape or double click exit to exit the full screen mode. So there's the exit full screen mode. I don't know where your computer's at right now, but this is when you are in full screen mode. Now it's always going to be in this top um, corner over here to exit these modes. Again, with my weird face right there. Sorry about that. <laughs> so now if you are in the fill screen mode, this is where it's taking up your computer and then you can still see your applications at the bottom. Um, there is, it's going to show you in this corner, this little box right here is how you enter the full screen mode. That is where you enter that. So if you want to go between fill screen mode and full screen mode, this is the button that you guys are going to click. And then remember, when you guys are in this fill screen mode, your participants list is going to show up on the corner over here. Someone have a question? Someone say something? No? Okay. So um, this is where your participants list will show up on the, on the left or the right hand side. So when you are in that full screen mode, that's when your uh, participants list in your chat box are going to come up separately on the computer. Now, when you guys are in the minimized screen mode, I feel like this is where a lot of people get lost because they can't find their application anymore. And when you are in the minimized screen mode, this is your face is going to show up in the corner over here, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you do that, how you exit the minimized screen mode, you have to click this little box with the arrow out of it. And that's how you get back to the big screen mode, whether it's probably going to bring you right back into the fill screen mode, and then you can make it full screen mode if you would like it to be. So you guys kind of want to test with that um, and make sure that that's here. It gives you the options where you can still um, hover over your video and mute yourself. But this is kind of if you were doing something else on your computer, um, and for whatever reason, and you're not, you have your screen minimized, you'll be able to turn on and off your camera right here and you'll be able to mute and unmute yourself right here. Are there any questions in regards to the minimized video? No? I do, Lucy. Um, I'm looking, I do have it on full screen right now. Okay. But I'm not seeing the um, where the you exit, said to go. The exit full screen? Yeah. So if you're on full screen mode, 
if you hover over your screen in the top left, if you're on a computer, it should have your exit full screen. Or you can press the escape button in the top left corner of your tablet, the ESC. You can click that and get out of full, like the full screen mode. Okay, I'm not seeing that on mine. The, what are you not seeing? This exit full screen button or the ESC yeah. on your computer? Both. Uh, so yeah, you, I see the escape. I see the escape. I don't see. Okay, so if you click escape, screen. it'll escape you out of that full screen. Go ahead and click that and see where it brings you. Or maybe I don't see escape either. No, I don't see on escape. On your keyboard? Either. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can see it there. I'm looking for it. Yeah, that's screen. the escape button. Okay. This is just this little thing right here, um, the press escape or double click exit full screen mode. That's like the little notification that pops up when you go into full screen mode. I just took a picture of that so you guys would see the options. That you yeah, so you figured it not. out now? You got out no, of full screen it's mode? it's not going anywhere. No. I'm pressing escape, but it's not doing anything. Anyway, go ahead. That's right. Okay. I'm going to stay in full screen anyway, so that's fine. All right, we can maybe troubleshoot it later if, if there okay. are some issues. All right, so are there any questions about the minimized or any of the screen modes? There's the full screen, just to go over again. Full screen, the fill screen, and um, the minimize screen. And when you're in this fill screen mode, you can um, take your take your browser and you can actually minimize it a little bit more if you don't want the full minimized view so that you can have it be a little bit smaller. Uh, Catherine, I see a question. Go ahead. You are muted, so you have to unmute yourself, which will be right down here. Corner. If you're on a computer. There we go. Uh, hi, Lucy. Um, hi. I do not see that minimize icon. So My, where is your screen right now? And I'm in, and I have a Chromebook, so. Okay, so are you in full screen mode or fill screen mode right now? Um, I am on the, oh here, I, I'm gonna exit full screen or I, I am on full screen. Okay, so once you exit full screen, if you wanna get to minimize screen, you will click yeah. this button right here. Like if you were minimizing your browser or something like that little minimize button. Oh, right. up here. Yeah. Right oh. here. And then you totally went away. Yeah, but you see yourself, right? No. Does it you don't see what do you see what do you see in your computer right now? Right now I see <laughs> me at the corner, you next to me, Nancy Burnup and Deborah. Hi Deborah Valentine. Um, and then down here it says screen modes, minimized screen mode. Okay. So it does you can you see my screen still or no? Yeah. I can see your Ooh. learn learning zoom basics no. mode. Like so good. And this little like icon with the arrow, I don't yeah. have that. So this is you might be in a in the mode, this uh, fill screen mode, but in a smaller version of it. Okay. So there is yeah. this button, which will make your screen smaller. Uh huh. And then there's well, the minimum. I got double painted. Okay. Except for the bedroom, I can't. Lynn, I just muted you. I, if you have a question, you can feel free to unmute yourself again. But no, you. Oh. Go ahead, Catherine. No, I. Well, you go ahead because I think I got it. You you got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got back to the regular screen. Yeah. All right, cool. Great, Nancy, I'm glad you got it too. Awesome. All right, so that's navigating those different screen modes. Now, there's different ways to um, view your screen. So for instance, there is speaker view and gallery view. Now, if you're in a Zoom meeting and there's a lot of different people, um, there's different views. Now, if the host, like myself, I'm gonna spotlight my video really quick and it should bring me up on all of you guys' screens. So it, you guys only see me now, right? With my, or me with my screen, obviously not. Yes, you yes. Know, yeah. My screen no, is I still see. shared. So you'll see me with the screen share. Now- I see everyone. You still- I see, 
I see six people is what I see. Okay. It might be, so you always have the option when um, someone does the spotlighted video on majority of people, it will take, say that this is a spotlighted video, but if you have your computer in a different setting, which is the speaker modes, so you have speaker view and gallery view. Now, okay. how you get to those, and I'll unmute myself, so you, or not unmute myself, but um, cancel the spotlight, so for those of you, it might have you stuck now in speaker view. Now, these are how you're going to navigate those. In the top right corner, there is the, um, this is the button to go into the full screen mode, but then there's the gallery view. Now, right now, it's on speaker view. You see how it has, if you guys are in the fill screen mode, it's gonna show the main person who's speaking, whoever, which is me, and then unless someone else is speaking, then it will show them on this box and then it will have the participants at the top here. Now, if you click this gallery view, it'll bring you to gallery view and then that will show all of the different people. And if, you have, if you're on the computer, it can show up to 25 people on that screen. Now, it is gonna look a little bit different right now because I'm sharing my screen. So for instance, I will stop sharing my screen for a moment so you guys can navigate that a little bit. Give me two seconds. Go ahead. Lucy, Tom. yeah, Lucy, up in my right-hand corner, I have the one to go at, uh, to enter full screen and then I have the swap shared screen with video, but I do not have your other that you mentioned. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you guys get a feel for what yeah. I'm talking about here. Cause now it's a I little all, bit different. Yeah, yeah all people, I see yeah. all people. Yep, so now this is on your gallery view. So let's say I'm gonna put spotlight my video. It's now made me your main screen, right? Right. All right, yes. so this is when a video is spotlighted and a, and a screen isn't being shared. So then when I stop spotlighting my video, now it should bring it to speaker view. So Dennis, go ahead and speak. Or someone speak, you see, you guys see how it's switching? I see it. Okay. What? I get gallery view and I get speaker view. Okay. Yep. So speaker view shows whoever's speaking. So if there's multiple people speaking, I would be speaking, then it's going to highlight me. And then if you start speaking, it's going to highlight you. That's speaker mode. So then clicking gallery view will make it so you see everybody. Now, if there's more than 25 people, and there's not more than 25 people on here, there's 24, um, there will be a, on the corner, the left or the right corner, there will be a little arrow sign beside the videos. And then you can scroll through more um, people if there's more than like, so when we're on those large calls with MCRTC and they have a hundred people on there, there's gonna be like four different screens that you can go through to see everybody that's on there if you're on the gallery mode. Does that make sense for everyone? Yeah. Yep. Any questions on that? Cool. I like that you guys are using your features already. I see people doing the thumbs up. Great job. All right, let me go back to sharing my screen. All righty. Okay. Cool. So um, that's the difference between gallery and all right. That's between the difference between gallery um, view and the um, speaker view and spotlighted video. Now, if you're on your phone, it's going to be different. So you're going to see at the bottom here these little dots, and those are the different screens that you guys have. Um, it will only give you a few different people, a select amount of people on each screen. But like, let's say I, I tried to get, you know, I got Michelle on here and everything so I can give you guys a view of like what it would look like with multiple people. But there's going to be um, three options here to start with if you only have a few people on your video. So if you swipe to the left, you're going to have the safe driving mode. And when you click on this, it'll give, it'll, put your speaker on, you can talk, and then you can tap it and be muted again. So it automatically stops your video and your microphone. And so if you're driving, you can put it on the safe driving mode and then just 
click, if you need to add something, you can click on the um, tap to speak and it will unmute you so that you can speak, not, not show your video, and then you can click it again when you're done. So that'll be when you're swiping left on this far left um, screen. Now, when you swipe right again, it's gonna show you the speaker mode, which on this case, it was me. Um, so that's whoever's speaking. And then when you swipe again, it will show you gallery mode. And if there are multiple people on the gallery mode, um, you can keep swiping to the right and you'll be able to see um, all the different people that are on there if you wanna um, navigate between and see who's on. Are there any questions in regards to the screen views on your phone? No? Okay. Now the raising your hand feature is very important, especially when we're in huge um, Zoom meetings. You guys, I've seen a couple of you guys have already utilized them. Good job, that's awesome. Um, but it is a great, there's a couple of different ways you can get to it. And I just wanna make sure that you guys understand how to do it so that when, let's say you guys are you know, hosting the Zoom and you ask people to raise their hand, um, it will actually, on the participant screen again, it will show you whose hand is raised and it will show you if your hand is raised. Um, and then it actually puts them in order of how, who raised their hand first and then the host or yourself, you can un, um, unraise your hand as well if your question has been answered or they can unraise your hand. Now, getting to that, again, with the participants list, if you go to the participants list, if it's not, right here sometimes it does pop up right here depending on the settings of the zoom call that you're on there might be a little hand icon and you can click on that and raise your hand or you can go to this dot 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 and click raise your hand so can you guys test that out really quick go and raise your hand try it barbara cool great good and then you can see on that same option it will give you the opportunity to unraise your hand too if they've answered your question Good, I see, yeah, good. And then what's, what you guys can actually see on your participants list, when you're looking at your participants list, you can see what order you're in as well. Like let's say I see Nancy's hand is raised so I can lower her hand. It brings her back down and then it kind of shows exactly the order. So let's say if you're in a big Zoom meeting and 10 people have a question and okay, I go to Renee first and then I say, okay, Renee's hand is raised. Thanks Renee. And then I lower her hand, Gail's next. Okay, you can kind of see the order in which you're in, in that participants list and see when your question is gonna come up or at least that's that, depending on the Zoom host as well. I don't wanna speak for other Zoom hosts, but um, you know, if they go in that order, you can see. Does anybody have any, I didn't see everybody go ahead and raise their hand. I saw a good, good portion of people, but does everybody understand the raise hand feature? That's gonna be very important, especially in MCRTC. Does, if, Cheryl, do you have an actual question? Okay, you good? All right. And then you guys see how to lower your hand as well. <laughs> I'm raising hands. I'm giving you thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and lower your hand. And you guys also, again, have the opportunity to lower your hand as well in the same area in which you found the um, raise hand option. So good. That's where it is on the computer. If you're on your phone, again, participants list is where you're gonna go to. So you're gonna go to the participants list and there's gonna be that little arrow again. So the same place in which you found how to rename yourself on your phone, that's where you're gonna find that raise hand option. And again, it's gonna show you that your hand is raised. So if they've already answered your question or let's say there's five people that also have a question and they answer your question and you don't, you know, you don't need to ask anymore, then you can unraise your hand so that your question's already been asked and the host knows that you guys have already answered it. Now there's an option to see it right there or when you are in the bottom screen, remember that more section on your phone, you can find it there too to raise your hand. So there's a couple different places you can find it. I find the easiest, the participants list, because you can kind of find everything there with the renaming yourself, muting yourself, your video. Um, so you can actually control that here as well. 
So let's say you're on your, this is your phone, right? And your hand is raised. You can unraise it here on this options. You can unmute yourself right here. You can um, turn on your video or off your video. You just have to click these icons and it will um, do that for you. Are there any questions about raising your hand? Okay, on phone or computer, good, cool. All right, now virtual backgrounds. Fun stuff, super fun stuff. I see a lot of you guys have already have your virtual backgrounds, so that's good. Um, now there are different options that they're gonna give you for your virtual backgrounds. And I will say, I know Katie said that she's looking forward to learning how to actually make one. And I'm gonna give you guys the, I, I can go through that at the end, um, but really quick, let's get into this. So I do want you guys to know that depending on your computer, it is not compatible with every computer. Now you can test it out and you can see, um, I'm gonna show you how to do that, but just know that it's not compatible with every computer. So um, you can use the ones that are provided or, you know, like Nancy, hers is one of those videos uh, backgrounds and that is one of the standard ones that they offer, or you can create your own. I utilize Canva like every single day of my life <laughs> and it's the best money I've ever spent. I, there is a free version on Canva, so you can, it's, it is free if you don't wanna pay for it. If you do pay for it, great, you have options to more um, backgrounds. And on Canva, this is the pixel this is the pixel that you want to create it um, by. So this is the width by the height. Now, if you're going on Canva, it'll, you can create this size of a graphic. You throw a picture on there, you make that fill the screen, and then you can slap your logo on there or whatever it might be. So that's how I created my background with the Arrow Title Services right here. I just found this nice, pretty sunset where it's five o'clock always, and then I put our little logo. <laughs> So um, we can go over questions about Canva if you guys want me to go a little bit, delve, delve into that a little bit deeper later, I can. Now, how do you get to choosing your virtual background? So if you go to the bottom left corner of your screen, you're going to see the stop video icon. Now, if you click on this, it's gonna stop your video or turn on your video. So don't click on that specific button. You're gonna click on the little arrow in the corner, the top corner of it, and then it will give you the options um, and you click choose virtual background. Now, when you do that, oh, and by the way, this feature is not available on phones, only on your computer. So just know that. Um, when you do that, it will bring you into the settings. Now there's a plethora of settings here, but it will bring you right to where you need to be. And this is where you can test to see if your virtual background is going to work or not. So you can actually do this on the call um, we're on right now and you can kind of be working around this, but really quick look at this. These are the virtual backgrounds that it's already going to have. These are the two I've added, but you know, it has San Francisco, some grass blades, you know, some Northern lights, whatever, and then the beach. And it shows you which ones are videos with a little video icon right there. Now, what you need to make sure is that unless you have a green screen, you need to make sure that this, I have a green screen is unchecked because you don't have a green screen, right? So you wanna make sure this is unchecked. And if you uncheck this, if it's already checked and you uncheck this, it'll actually tell you if your computer is compatible or not um, on, in most cases. So a little notification will come up and be like, your screen isn't compatible for it, so you can't utilize it. Um, if your computer is um, compatible with it, then you can go ahead, it'll show normally. Um, you can then, this is the button in this corner, this top, right corner is where you can add an image or a video. And when you create that on Canva, you just download it to your computer, to your downloads files or wherever you wanna put it in your files. And then when you go to click this, it'll bring you to your files and then you just search wherever you save that, um, that file. And then that's when you'll add it in there. And then once you get it, once it uploads, then you can select it. You see how this one's selected in blue. So that's the one that I chose. So I have a question, Lucy. Go ahead, Barbara. Okay, so I have the green screen unchecked and I, it said download this package, which I did, and it's still telling me choose virtual background and it's telling me none. My, cu so, my computer doesn't meet this requirement. It's a newer computer, it's a newer laptop. But it doesn't meet the requirements? I wonder why that is. 
uh, I'm not sure. It really, that's on Zoom's, Zoom side of things. I just know that it doesn't work with some computers. Um, okay. Now, if you try to click, if you click none, and then if you see that there are some of the um, virtual backgrounds, you can try and click on it. Um, but this is what it might do. And you, you might have to bring down your camera so that if I, if I have green screen clicked, and let's say if your computer isn't compatible with it, this is what it is going to do to you. Yeah. Okay. I'll have, to, I'll have to work with it and see what I can figure out. I look pretty cool, don't I? I look like a, like a space, space character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's important to say you don't have a green screen because, I mean, most of us don't. Um, and then, yeah. So that's what you guys want to make sure. Now, if your computer, I can't do anything if your computer isn't compatible with it. Um, it might be a settings thing that you can, I know that Zoom, um, if, it, if it is compatible, then you can, like sometimes Zoom, you have to update Zoom in order for it to um, work. So make okay, sure that your Zoom is up to date. That's an opportunity to be able to see if it'll work. Um, other than okay. that, if your computer isn't compatible, then that's, that's that. Are there any questions about the virtual background in regards to how to get to it? Neil, did anybody try it out? All right. Good. All right, so using the chat box, um, you guys, a few of you have already used the chat box, so this might be, you know, something you already know, but just in case you don't know how to utilize the chat box, you know, it is an important aspect. And there's actually some features on there you might not realize. Um, so again, when you're on your computer, it's gonna be the little chat box right there. You're gonna click on that. And if you are on that fill screen mode, it will bring up your, well, if you click on participants, it'll bring up your participants here. If you haven't clicked on participants already, it'll just show the group Zoom chat. Um, if you have clicked on both, it will show them layered right like this. And again, if you are on the full screen mode, it's going to pop them out separately. So you can, there's two ways to utilize the chat. Um, and this does depend on the settings of the Zoom um, of the Zoom meeting that you are entering. So if you're in a Zoom meeting and they have disabled the ability to use the chat, then you can't use the chat. If they've disabled the ability to privately chat someone, then that is another thing. But on most Zoom meetings, you can have, you have the option to chat to everybody and then you have the option to privately chat people. So if you go and you click right here, this little button, it'll say to everyone. And then if you click on this, it should give you all of the participants and then you can ch click and choose who you want to message and when you click if, if someone wants to send me a private message or someone else if you guys are already you know talking behind my back and saying how horrible i am no i'm just kidding <laughs> but um you know you guys can go ahead and you try and do that private chat function um and then what's really nice with that too is you can save your chat as well. So like, let's say someone's sending you information, like I'm going to put in the chat right now, our information for our social media. So I put that to everybody. Now you can actually, and I'll go over this in just a minute on how you put those links in there and such. Um, like, let's say, you know, we're in a Zoom meeting and everybody's like, oh, you know, if you have a Facebook address, like send me, put your link in the chat. Now you can go ahead and click this button right here, this dot, 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 and it will give you the ability to save the chat. So that will go to your downloads folder in your computer and you'll be able to save all of the information if someone put their phone number in the chat or if they private messaged you and they're like, hey, you know, call me at this number or whatever. And then like the Zoom meeting's about to be over, then you can save your chat and get that information um, in another, you know, in your downloads. Um, you also have the ability to um, upload files. So we're going to go over really quick the links. When you're posting a link, you can't just do the www dot. You see how in the chat I posted H is the HTTPS or whatever, like the full address that will create it to when it's blue and underlined, 
that's when it's an actual link. So if any of you guys click on those links right now, it'll actually bring you to that link directly. It'll bring you to our YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, which you guys should follow. <laughs> um, so that's how you put those links in. So if you want to put in a link in the chat for someone to check out, whether it be on Facebook, which you can just go to the um, address bar and just copy and paste that and put it into the chat. Like if you're trying to, uh, if you're hosting an event and that event is on Facebook, you go to that event itself, go to the address bar on your computer, copy and paste that into the chat and then people can directly go to that link or they can save the chat and copy and paste the link later. Um, now, if you want to upload a file, like for instance, a, a photo or, you know, a document or whatever, and there's some reason, like it, this might be good for your listing presentations if you have something to share with them, like um, a, a, I don't know, the, the CMA or whatever it is, the cross-market analysis, right? So you can go ahead and utilize this file function as well to send to them, or you can email them as well. But if you wanted to do this, you could. You click on the file button here, and then it, brings up your files, you search where in your files where you've saved it to, and then you can upload it and it will upload. You can do that privately, or you can do that to everybody, depending on the uh, mode. Are there any questions regarding uploading files or links in the chat box? Yeah? Yes, I do. Yes, Joe. Um, I, can pull up my chat, but I can't see the participants. So are you in fill screen mode or full screen mode? Full screen. So again, when you pull up, when you're on full screen and you pull up the chat, you're going to have to go to the Zoom meeting and click participants as well. So you have to click, they'll come up on separate um, uh, little bubbles. Okay, so I go into participants then? What are you looking to do? Are you trying to upload a file or are you just trying, what do you? I'm trying to see your, the participants on my screen. All I see is the chat. Okay, so yeah, you would just click participants if you want to see the participants that are on. So that would be at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, okay, I've got that. Got it. And then that's just giving me invite, mute me and raise my hand. Yeah, so what do you, what do you, that's what I'm asking. I what are you trying to do? Are you trying to actually input something in the chat to like privately chat someone? What do you? Um, probably to see the files and things that I can upload. Okay, so that would be underneath, um, that would be underneath the chat section. So when you go to chat, okay. again, it's gonna be right here. So if it's, if this is popped out on your Zoom screen, then at the right. bottom, it'll say two and it will say, to everyone, or you can click on this, right. and then it can, you can do the private chats. Now, okay. if, I do want to mention, if someone private chats you, um, like let's say, Nancy, you private chat me, be careful, like let's say you're trying to chat to everybody. Um, let's say you're trying to chat to everybody, and if it'll automatically um, put that private chat to that person. So for instance, Dan, you're welcome, Dan. <laughs> Dan just private messaged me and said, thank you, Lucy, from Dan. Now, my chat box went directly to me responding to Dan, so it made it private. But like, let's say I'm trying to type something in there and I'm trying to do it to everybody. I need to manually go in there and click that button and bring it back to everyone so that I can chat to everybody. I understand that. I just don't, for some reason, I can't get the participants up. I mean, I can get the participants up, but then where do I go to see all the buttons on the right-hand side? Like, like where you just showed that you can upload a file and I don't see that. So you don't see that in your chat box? It should be right next to your chat box. Okay. In your chat box, right next to the to section right here, it should say file or the dot, dot, dot to save the chat. Nope, I'm, I'm missing something, but go ahead, just continue, I'll mm -hmm. figure it out. I, I missed a step probably, but that's okay, Cont continue. It, it should be, it should be right there in the Zoom, Zoom chat, but. Um, yeah, I'm in the chat, I open the chat, and all I see is that. So then. All you see is the two, everyone, or two, an individual, you don't see the file or the dot, dot, dot. Right, oh, there's the dot, dot, dot. 
Save okay. chat. That dot 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 just says save chat. Yes. Yeah, so that's how you save the chat. Okay, I got and that. You, okay. Okay. And then if I go into file. Yeah, you see the file see button. The yeah, I get Dropbox, Microsoft One, Google Drive, Box. Yeah. So know. that's if you wanted to share a file to someone, you can click on that file and then share a photo or share a, a file or a document if you want to share that to your Zoom meeting. Okay. And All then right, it will pop up like on my screen right here. Like I shared a le learning Zoom. This is the picture. So it, that Friday. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. 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 It, cool. it did. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm good. Cool. Awesome. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. That's what we're here for. <laughs> All righty. So chat box on your phone. Um, when you go to that, you have to at the bottom you're going to have all of your different um, functionalities that you can utilize right you're going to click more and then click chat again just like the participants list if you're on your phone and you have the chat box open it's going to take up your whole screen so you're not going to be able to see anybody or whatever it might be um, if there is someone who has chatted or someone added in the chat there will be a number that'll pop up right here like four or something like that like let's say there's four new messages that you haven't seen um so that's how you can kind of monitor that if you're on your phone you have to double check that so again you have the same option right here send to everyone or you can do your private chat um, when you're on your phone as well All right, are there any other questions about the chat box using private chat, group chat, uploading files or links? All right. So muting and unmuting yourself. By now, a few of you guys have gotten this down, but I do wanna make sure in case you guys don't know how to utilize these functions that you guys understand them. So the in the bottom left corner of your computer, you're going to see the mute button. Now you can mute yourself here. You can click this and it will have a red X over it. Um, and then that will unmute yourself or mute, that will mute you. If it's red X, then that means you're muted. If it's not, doesn't have a red X over it, then it is not muted. Um, same thing with your video. You can do the same thing with your video. If there's a red X over it, again, just like right over here, you see over here. So now, that's how you unmute and mute yourself. You can do that down here at the bottom. You can do that in the participants list. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Now, in your settings, which we're going to go to right here, um, if you let me let me show you how to get to that. So if you click that um, top little corner right here next to the mute button, um, that'll bring you. It'll show you all these different things. It'll show your speaker and microphone, but don't mess with those. Just you can go to your audio settings from here. Now, if for some reason your microphone isn't working or someone can't hear you or whatever it might be, you can go to test your microphone and speaker right here and it will give, it'll prompt you with um, a little or troubleshooting thing. And you, that's what I had to do in the beginning of this because for some reason I couldn't hear you because sometimes it just like updates, Zoom updates a lot. They've been doing a lot of updates because of all of the, people that are utilizing it. So just be aware that your settings might change at some point if your Zoom is updating, et cetera. So you wanna make sure that that's always working. Um, you click on the audio settings and this is where it'll bring you to. Again, there's a plethora of settings. It'll bring you right to where you need to be. Um, your different speakers, if you have different speakers on your computer or your microphones. So it'll show you your output levels, but you can right here put automatically join audio by computer when joining a meeting so that it automatically does it if this is not checked then you'll have to manually do it um now you can do there's a couple of different options like you can make this whatever you are more comfortable with now a cool little option is that you can have this checked marked and it says press and hold space key to temporarily temporarily unmute yourself. So let's say you're on a Zoom call and you're muted like you are like you guys are now and you want to speak really quickly and just like say a question but not like have to go through like the participants list or whatever to unmute yourself. You can just press the space key and it will unmute you if your settings are set up to be able to do that. And then so as long as your finger is on the the space key it will have you unmuted and then when you release it, it will mute you again. You guys get that? 
any questions in regards to those settings? No? Okay. Now sharing your screen. This is a big one because a lot of people have a lot of questions about sharing your screen and I know that I host a market update Monday and sometimes people fumble with it. Um, now it is going to look a little bit different when you're sharing your screen on your own computer, um, but there are two buttons that you really need to press when you're doing this, when you're utilizing this. Now there is the share screen button that, that'll show on your phone or your computer. Now that'll be at the bottom in green, bright green, it's showing you to share your screen. You click on this, and then this is going to pop up. It's going to say, select a window and application that you want to share. Now, it's automatically going to show your screen. When you click screen, it'll automatically do your full screen, everything that you show on that screen. If you have a second screen connected to your computer, it will bring up that option as well and say second screen. So if you have the second screen, sometimes that's really helpful if you guys are doing these listening presentations. So, because now I have two screens, I'm able to have my presentation right here so I can see what I'm sharing with you guys. And I also have all of you guys' videos here, my participants list and the chat so that I can um, um, see everything. So having the two screen functionalities can be very helpful. Now, the biggest thing is if you're trying to specifically share something, Let's say I am sharing my Zoom thing. Whatever is highlighted in blue right here, so if I clicked on here, this would highlight in blue. I need to make sure that I'm sharing the proper screen. Now, it is going to bring up all of your applications that you have. So if you have more, like I always have a bunch of things open on my computer, I can go to show all windows so that I can see everything that I have. So I can go ahead and do that. And then once you've selected something, you need to click on this, whatever is highlighted. Okay, great. You've selected that. Now you need to click share again. It doesn't share. As soon as you click that, it doesn't share it. And I feel like this is where the disconnect happens a lot. So you need to click the share button in the bottom right corner again. And once you click that, it will allow you to share. Does everybody get that? Now, I'm sharing my screen right now. Um, I believe the function for you guys to be able to share is off. I can turn it on if everybody, if anybody wants to, you know, mess with it really quick, but I know, oh, actually I'm saying that we're, you know, we're a little bit over time here, so maybe we won't do that. But does anybody have any questions in regards to sharing your screen? There is two buttons, that's the most important thing. You need to click the share screen button at the bottom, and then you need to select the screen you want to share and then click share again. And then it should share your screen as long as you have the capabilities to do so. Okay. Cheryl, do you have a question? No, I'm just, <laughs> nope, I'm happy. You're happy? All right, good. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. I was just thinking, no, I don't think I, no, I'm not going to share my screen. I was going to do it, but it's locked. I thought, no, I don't want to. <laughs> well, I can only, you know, I, if you guys want to test any of these things afterwards, you know, because I know we're getting to we're getting to the end of this. Um, so I want to make sure that any I want to respect your guys' time, but we can definitely mess with it and I can put the application on so that you guys can um, test it out. And I'm here for any questions. So there are a lot of, as we talked about earlier, there are a lot of different um, settings that you can utilize in Zoom. When you guys are on those virtual background settings or the audio, you can click on any of the things over here and get to the other settings um, on your computer for your Zoom. Now, and you can kind of mess with those, just be careful that you're not like changing something that you can't, that you don't want to change back. Um, Greg, I see um, you said you selected a screen background, but your face is distorted. So again, you have to make sure that it doesn't say green screen. The green screen cannot be checked and it is not compatible with every single computer. So make sure that you utilize that. Yeah, every time I click the um, green screen, it says this computer, it's a new Dell. It's just not compatible. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know why it doesn't work with every single computer. I'm not sure. I have like a Lenovo and I guess I got lucky. It's not even, mine's like four years old or something like that. But um, again, maybe try going to Zoom and seeing if there's any updates that you can do on Zoom 
um, and that might help because they are changing it all the time. Okay. I have a um, Dell as well, Greg, and it's not working on mine either. It's telling me it's not compatible with my Dell as well. So maybe it's a Dell issue and you have to upgrade to a different package yeah. with Zoom. Um, and then someone did ask that they were late getting to the webinar. Um, is it being recorded? Yes, I am recording it. I'll put it on our YouTube channel so you guys can still get to it. Um, can we, how can we invite participants to a future Zoom meeting? I can go over that for sure. And I have a Zoom Pro account. Can you host an educational course? Yes, I can, Katie. I can. Um, and we'll talk to the association if they want that to be through MCRTC. But I do just want to let you guys know that there are extra settings here. Um, so you can actually change your skin tone if you want to like have your different thumbs up be different. Um, now, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier or not, but with the at the bottom of your screen, this reactions right here, when you click reactions, it will give you a thumbs up and it will give you a claps. So this will show in the top right or top left corner of your screen. So you can do claps. Like if, you know, someone says something and you're like, yeah, clap <laughs> or thumbs up, whatever it might be. And you can kind of mess with that. So those are those little um, emo uh, emojis that you can utilize. And if you wanted to change the color of the skin, you could if you wanted. So, all right. Um, Let's see, so how do you invite participants to a future Zoom meeting? So when you guys go to the participants screen, uh, you'll be able to see at the bottom, it should, the bottom left corner, it should say invite. When you click invite, it will bring up this box and it, let me see, can you guys see this? Does it show that? Can you guys see that little invite box that I just put on my screen here, right here? Yes, cool. So when you click on invite in the participants list, you'll be able to see copy link invite. Now it'll copy to your clipboard and now you can go and paste it um, into wherever if you want to. And it will show you right here a meeting passcode. Um, you can copy that. This is the link. This is the copy invitation. So this will show um, the full invitation if they want to like call by phone or whatever it might be. So that's how you invite people to your meeting. It will also, a good thing to recognize is that it will show invite people to join this meeting. If you have the Zoom application um, and you like downloaded, you know how you can join a meeting and if you have the meeting code and the password, then you're good. That shows right here at the top. The, this is the meeting um, ID number and then the password. So you can also send that to people as well if for some reason you can't figure out how to copy the link, but this link will bring them exactly to it. So that's how you share the link with people. Um, are there any other questions in regards to that? Dennis, go ahead. Um, it's been a good training session, but how would we as agents, I'm using it for virtual walkthroughs, but I have to use a computer person that knows how to set it up to invite me to it rather than me invite him to it. So how do we set up a Zoom meeting, I guess? So um, doing the setting up a Zoom meeting, do you have the paid account or, I mean, you can do it whether it's free or paid, but do you have the paid account? Just see. Do you pay for Zoom? Not right now. Not right now, okay. So if you have the free account, you can still set up a meeting. Um, let me see if I can pull this up. All right. So you guys see this on my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen. You see the title. Zoom, like the learning Zoom basics here? Does it show that? No, it just shows you uh, and everybody else and the dog. I like the dog. <laughs> yeah, that's Max. Okay, so I'm yes. wondering why it won't share that. Let's see. Maybe because it's like I'm trying to share Zoom. Okay, the Zoom. okay I don't want to take everybody's time up. If that's something I can research myself, I will. But. So if you have Zoom downloaded to your computer, um, I do. What what you do is there's four um, icons. There's the home like right at the top. There's the home, chat, meetings, um, and contacts. If you click on okay. home, yeah. if you click on the home button on the Zoom application that's downloaded to your computer, you can click schedule. When you click schedule, there's, it, it'll show you, you can join a meeting or sh share your screen or schedule a meeting. When you click schedule, you can schedule a meeting 
Uh, you can name it. Um, you can set the time and everything like that. And then you'll be able to share that information if you uh, select the, um, what's okay. it called? The different, there's like different calendar invites that you can do. Like if let's say you have Outlook, you can say Outlook calendar, you can click on that. And then it will automatically bring up in your Outlook a invitation and then you can email it to that person and invite them to it and they can accept it, et cetera. Kind of like you would with a normal appointment. So you can do that straight through the Zoom application. All right, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Is there any other questions? I can't see learning basic Zoom. Um, Oh no, what happened to my... Lucy, I have a question. Go ahead. Is there a way to say, we got the invite in the email. Is there a way to save the link for future? Because I've run into, oh, I forgot when I got that link, when I got that, and then all of a sudden I'm searching through all my email to find where the link is from your yes. original <laughs> email. What I recommend doing and what I do, again, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a slave to my calendar. So I will, when I get that email um, originally, like, you know how it gives you the link and everything and the um, meeting code and the password, I copy and paste that. And then ah, I okay. create, if they don't give me the option to add it to my calendar, like they don't send me an iCalendar invite, then I will create an account. Uh, a appointment in my computer and then I will put it in the chat or, or not the Great. chat, the, um, the description of that meeting. So then when I'm ready to go to that meeting, I just go to my um, Outlook or whatever and then I can just click on the link directly from there. It'll bring me into the meeting and that's how, that's how I do it. That, sa that saves me tremendous time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I go searching all the time for these Zoom meetings. Yeah, I completely get it. I, again, if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. So <laughs> yeah, and I guess um, yeah. that we can we can play with um, all of these things outside of a Zoom meeting. Yeah, yeah. So you, if you have a Zoom account, you can actually um, go into what's called a. Um, uh, it's called your meeting room and then it's like your own little like personal meeting room and you can go in there and kind of play with it. Um, when you're on the Zoom application, it will say, you know, start a personal meeting room like you have your your specific um, room uh, ID number. So you don't okay. want to always utilize that. You do want to do the generated um, meeting numbers because then they're less likely to get hacked into because they're automatically generated. But if you're just messing around, utilize that um, personal meeting room. You can go in there, share your screen, make sure it's working all right and everything. And that's with the free as well. Uh, that is with free, yes. Okay, so, okay thanks. Um, yeah, the, what's nice about, and I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, what's nice about the option to um, pay for Zoom is that you don't have to worry about only being on for 45 Four. minutes or whatever it might right. be. Yeah, and there's more functionality that you can utilize. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Is there this any is other awesome. questions that anybody has? Did I, hopefully I answered a lot of you guys' questions. I know we went a few minutes over, but... If, um, again, I would love for you guys, if you guys went to, my name is Lucy McGuire with Aero Title Services. Um, we do have that, I put in the chat earlier, I don't know if you guys saved the chat when we went over that portion, um, but we do have our YouTube channel and our Facebook and Instagram. Would love if you guys went and followed us. Um, we have a lot of great content out there. And if you guys ever have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, I can go ahead and put that in the chat for you guys as well. My email, direct email, and my cell phone number. So if you guys ever have any questions or need me to go over anything with you, I will go into a um, private Zoom meeting with you and help you guys. I'm here as a resource for you guys. I'd like to thank you for your training today. Absolutely. I'm happy. Yes, thanks, Lucy. You're very welcome. Lucy, this right. was awesome. You taught us a lot. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm glad that I could be of help. I know that it's something that we really needed. If, if anybody wants to stay around and wants to like play with the whole share screen option, I, had, I do have a few minutes so I can do that. Um, it's up to you guys. Just let me know. I think the next thing is to go to a computer person and find out how, why my machine is not compatible with the green screen. So yeah, I need to you, buy you, another one. 
Yeah, you need to make sure that um, um, it doesn't, that the green screen isn't clicked. But yeah, the, um, I, it's, just, it's hard because it's like, I don't know why some computers it's not compatible with and some it is. It's kind of crazy. And um, I will uh, email everyone out this Zoom meeting as well. Uh, I'll upload it to our YouTube channel and I'll email you guys because when you guys registered, you had um, your emails in there. So I'll make sure you guys get the copy of this video so you guys can rewatch it and hear, hear me go yeah. over it all again. <laughs> well, thank you much. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining guys. Thanks so much for your time. I'm glad I could be of help. If anybody has Lucy, any questions, I'll stay around. I'll have, yeah, this is not for everybody if, if they don't want to listen, but um, <laughs> I did try to copy your link when you had it up for YouTube. Yeah. And of course, it came up, but then I'm hearing both of you. So I didn't know how to mute. The, uh, oh, oh, yeah, because it like brought up our YouTube channel and then that started playing. Yeah. Um, I guess I can just stop it. Yeah, you can just pause it on the, okay. the YouTube portion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I didn't think about that. 